this is Hook by Happenstance, and I'm Kendra, and it is time for another episode of Makes Monday Retreat. This is a crochet podcast where I always begin by telling you about the ways I am enamored by etymology, so my love of words, and we begin by discussing a word of the week. But before we talk about the word of the week, let's talk about this, this strange brightness. What, what is this? This is daylight. Did you all know that I exist during daylight? It doesn't happen often. But last night I turned into a pumpkin before before I got this filmed. So here we are in the light of day. I'm not sure how it's all turning out. I think I feel a little bright, but whatever. It'll all be fine. So our word for the week is retreat. And we're doing this old school. We're going to use a paper dictionary because my uh, computer's otherwise occupied in the other room. If you hear the Nutcracker Suite in the background, that is how my children are currently occupied listening to, uh, to that in the other room and coloring. So, enjoy if you can hear it. Okay, so our word, retreat, uh, is a noun, meaning an act of withdrawing, especially from something dangerous, difficult, or disagreeable. The second definition is a military signal for withdrawal. Also, a military flag-lowering ceremony. That one I did not know. And the third is a place of privacy or safety, a refuge. The fourth is a period of group withdrawal for prayer, meditation, and study. There's also the verb form of retreat, meaning to make a retreat, withdraw, or to slope backward. So, the reason that retreat is the word for the week is because I spent four days by myself in a cabin at a lake. I know that for a lot of you, the idea of being alone sounds terrible because, you know, you'll tell me that you already live alone or whatever, but I do not live alone. I am never alone. Even when everyone's sleeping, I am still in charge of small humans. So, it was incredibly nice and restful for me to have four days to worry about nobody but myself. I tripped over nothing on the floor. I had to feed nobody but me. It was lovely. And I enjoyed myself and I got a bunch of things done. I also happened to get a bunch of things done beforehand. Um, I have not filmed in a couple of weeks, so there's some uh, some progress that was made before the retreat, some that was made at, and then I've actually been um, fairly creatively motivated since because I am more well rested. It's amazing what a little bit of rest will do for your motivation. So today we're gonna discuss, I made show notes, people, show notes. Who is this person that came back from this retreat? She seems quasi-organized. Oh, she was actually organized. I would have filmed this last night. But I put together this list and I compiled all the things which are stacked over here. And that took a while and then I was exhausted and yeah, it was just too much. So we'll begin with what is off my hook. So the first thing that is off my hook is my uh, scrap timber leftovers, we'll say. There were a couple of things that I was working on in September when I did scrap timber projects, which was my, my big push to finish some of these scrappy projects I had started over time, that then kind of languished and were taken up a whole lot of room on my shelf. And I managed to finish several of them. Two of them have had videos. This one will probably get a video of its own here shortly, just, you know, to wrap up loose ends. But I just wanted to show you the finished Better Mood Blanket. This here is uh, my Better Mood blanket with the rest of my things on it. It turned out to not be a blanket anymore. It is now a chair cover for my office chair to, uh, to keep, keep the cats from it. Um, on the back here, I made a panel which I attached, which um, is then sewn down the side so it keeps, keeps the thing on. There is also a panel here in the front, which keeps it wrapped around the bottom, and again, I can remove it if I need to for cleaning and what have you. The cats have enjoyed cuddling up on it, and it's keeping them from scratching my chair anymore, so good things. Next scrap timber project that I finished is actually what ended up taking a bunch of my scrap timber time. I started to do a retest of the written pattern for my cogitation cowl. If you are unaware what the cogitation is, it's an ongoing project I've been doing where I'm basically making a pattern based on videos that I've made here on the channel. So Happenstance is writing a pattern for me based on previous things that I've done. Um, the pattern is now actually up and available for the cogitation cowl. 
on my Patreon through Peachless Pattern Pile. This is the worsted weight version. Um, I decided to retest. Here's the, here is the, this is the original, which is made out of loops and threads wool-like. It's smooshy and comfy and, hmm, I guess I could wear it today. But anyways, it, uh, it was just going to be a lot to try and do another fingering weight cowl to test it. And I had some scraps that needed a purpose. So I used the scraps from my nephew's Tides of Change afghan, which you may remember from this summer. That was a pattern by Franka Randall that I did and really enjoyed and made a beautiful afghan. I made it out of Red Heart Soft and I had leftovers of the different blues, grays, and black. So this has black, navy, oh, and then the light gray and charcoal maybe? I think those are the color names. But anyways, there was also a royal blue in the afghan, but royal blue is not really my color preference and since I made this cowl for me, I chose to leave that color out, but it made a huge, yummy, warm cowl. I've actually worn it a couple of times, and I like it because when it's cold and I'm not doing anything, I just tuck my little arms in. I've taken a nap under this cowl, which is really pleasant. Um, but then if you're, you know, out and about, I have my arms to do arm, arm things. You can also um, double it, and basically, I just used the identical pattern for these two cowls. I just upped the um, the hook size to match the yarn that I was using. Um, but yeah, here it is. Like I said, this took me a while. There are quite a lot of rows, and I don't know why my, there we go. I'm wearing a flannel shirt, and I'm wearing my sidewalk shawl. I've made, this shawl is a free pattern from Red Heart. This is like, I've made three of them. It is my favorite, like, everyday totally usable shawl pattern um, that I found so far. I really like the shape and everything. Uh, but yeah, when I wear flannel, it sometimes gets stuck and then it keeps feeling like it's falling off. It's not, it's just stuck. You know like when you wear flannel pajamas and flannel sheets and you stick in the bed? Anyways, I digress. So, this is all scraps from that afghan. I took all the little balls that I had because the, um, the Tides of Change is worked in a mandala style, so at the end of every like ball, I would end up with a little bit of yarn that I wouldn't use because it wouldn't make like a full round or even a good push toward a full round. So I had a bunch of these small balls left over, and then I also had two, one partial ball and then one full skein. So I started by just picking up the small balls that I had left and just alternating them. So I went dark, black, light, blue, dark, black, light, blue, and then had a dark, but I didn't have any more black, so then I kind of went through and did it that way. Um, these were pieces here. Then I had a partial black skein that I had cracked into, and I put the rest of that there, and then I had a full one of the navy, and I did that here. And then I ran out of yarn, but I did not run out of pattern. And since the main purpose of this was not just to get me a, like, functional item, it was also to test my pattern, I needed to do all the rows. So, I pulled out some, um, this is Loops and Threads Soft and Shiny in the color gray, I want to say. It is actually leftovers from my Inspirament shawl, whose pattern is also available over on my Patreon. So, I just finished it off with my leftovers of that, and I think it matches really nice. I don't think it's noticeable, and since they're not actually, like, touching, it just looks like one other gray. And it actually kind of falls between the two grays of the Red Heart Soft, and they all kind of have that little sheen to them. So, it's nice. I haven't washed this yet. I think it's going to get softer and more smooshy once it's been washed. Um, it's still a little bit stiff, but that has so far been nice. It's got a little structure to it. So, I'm sure you will see more of this as the winter progresses and I wear it all the time to be warm and cozy. Next, I went through and I have been actively trying to cultivate a handmade wardrobe. So the idea that I can wear basically head to toe things that are made by me eventually. Obviously that can't happen overnight, so it's like piece by piece getting added. But I have been trying to make an effort as I pull things out of my closet to try them on. 
if there are handmade pieces that I'm not wearing to think about why. Is it because I'm just not in the mood for them that day? Is there something wrong with the fit? Is the color not right? Is it something I'm legitimately going to wear at some point? Or does it need to be frogged or passed along or have changes made? Well, when it came to this vest, I actually, I think I'm wearing this in the last podcast. Um, I made this a few years ago and I apparently didn't clip the ends when I wove them in. But anyways, um, this vest is made from a, I think I used a Garn Yarn Studio pattern. This is Barocco yarn that has some kind of linen content. I don't even remember the name of it because I completed this like three years ago. Um, it was back when I still followed patterns to their, or attempted to follow them to a T with what resources I had as opposed to making massive changes like I do now. Um, there had been a whole bunch more at this bottom part and I never liked it because I didn't like the way it laid on my hips. So I frogged all of that and I frogged out the neck piece. Well, that, well, that left me with more yarn. Um, that I had the ability to put into this front section. Also, when I reattached the the like edging bit, I um, ma was more careful with how many stitches I put in. I think I might have decreased it a little so that it doesn't bunch. It's now wider, so it covers my chest better. And I also, through this top section, picked up stitches a little differently just to give me a little more room through the shoulders because of the way that it's constructed. It is a free pattern. If you look on Ravelry, um, this is actually one of the things, it's not made out of the yarn it called for, but even when I use patterns, I rarely end up using like the colors or the style because that's just not my thing. But this is actually um, very similar looking to what the model is wearing. So here it is. And now, now it actually is big enough, it fully covers my chest. Like I said, there's more room through the shoulders and the front, the front can actually come together so I could like pin it or button it or something. I consider putting a button on, I don't know. We'll see what I come up with, but it definitely is more wearable now, and I think it will become a piece that is part of my wardrobe uh, because it fits better. And then the back, I just think, is really pretty. So it's a nice piece. It uh, it now that it's shorter, I actually think it's more wearable too. I had made it longer so I could wear it with like leggings and stuff, but it just I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't working, and now now I think it is. So I do suggest that if you pull out things that you've made and there are bits that you think, oh, I wish it had this thing about it or that thing about it, if you think that thing more than once, it probably really is just worth, cat, that is not a toy, that is a sweater. Um, it is probably worth just making those changes because it's not doing you any good to have a finished product just sitting folded on a shelf, never being used, just because you don't want to undo something finished. Undo it and then use it because it's doing nobody any good if it just sits there. Then it's good yarn in a bad project, and now it's good yarn in a good, more usable project. Alrighty, more things off my hook. I made this hat the other day. This is the Think With Your Heart hat. Um, it is another pattern that is also available on my Patreon. This one is made out of Lion Brand Heartland in whatever the light gray color is and the pink color. This pattern has two ways you can wear it. It has this heart motif brim that you can wear down and it makes it slouchy, or you can fold the brim up, and then it's more of a beanie style, but the hearts show along the edging because the color shows through. This is made as a solid bit, but the pattern is actually written with a with some stripes in it. And this is made with the leftovers from my Inspiritment and these two actually coordinate. So if that's something you're interested in, like I said, pattern is available over on Patreon. And part of the reason I made that hat was because I wanted to test the pattern one more time before I put it up. I really like it. I like the way it fits. I think there will probably be more patterns um, kind of in this style in my future because I like it. And I like the the option to make it slouchy or not, and I like the little peekaboo hearts. I think that's fun too. Then on retreat, I didn't actually complete anything because I ran out of yarn. I did the projects I worked on until I got to the point where I didn't have the supplies with me anymore. So my dad saw my Simply Satisfying rug mat and he called me and was like, hey, I like that and I think I need one. 
and I was going to make him some anyways for Christmas. He pointed out that maybe before Christmas would be good, and he had a birthday that happened last week, and so I'm still holding his gift. Oops. But Peachlet actually picked this for me, and I'll let Peachlet pick. Um, she sent me to my cotton drawer. This is, like I said, my Simply Satisfying rug mat pattern, which is available on Patreon, and it is held double with some peaches and cream ivy league as well as a variegated like green and gray variegated that i had used in a previous rug didn't like tore out and had just balled up in my stash so i used all of that dark green variegated that i had and then as you can see this side looks different and that is because i ran out of that variegated um while i was on retreat i got to this point and then i ran out of all of the yarn i had with me when i got home i pulled out a skein of like whatever the general like sagey green color is and I just finished it out that way. It's it's noticeable but I don't think it looks bad and it's a rug when it's on the floor you really can't tell. I wanted to add a little something though to kind of even out the like dark and then it getting lighter as well as making it autumnal so that I could check off something on my bingo board and like I said I just wanted to do something a little fun. So I grabbed the autumn acorn coaster pattern from Celinda Matthews I believe is her name um, and it is free on Ravelry I made the acorn pattern I could have figured one out myself which was my initial like gut reaction was like let's make up an acorn and then I realized that I had a box to check off that involved doing a new pattern so I found a new pattern and just followed it it is a perfectly nice acorn motif if you're looking for one or for a coaster. I went down in hook size which made it more um, the appropriate motif size. If you were going to do a coaster I would go up in hook size. So. so then I just sewed it on. So the back side you actually don't see any of the stitching. I was very careful with my stitching so he can put it either way. If he doesn't like the acorn he can just put it face down. And I think this will be a good functional piece for my dad. Super easy to wash and dry. I've been really happy um, not only making these, I'm really enjoying this pattern, um, but in using them around my house and washing them, they're really durable and sturdy and they keep their shape nice, both when they're on the floor and when they go through the washer and dryer. So that is, that is the Simply Satisfying Rug Mat. And last night I made one more thing. So the final thing off my hook for this episode is this hat. It is the Wanderlust Beanie from, it's either Kirsten or Kirsten Holloway Designs. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I made this out of Lion Brand Wool Ease, and I want to say the color is wood. It's been in stash. The ball band is gone. I just happen to know it's Wool Ease. And I have made this for my brother-in-law, whose birthday is the same day as my dad's. So I'm holding two belated birthday presents. Um, I thought that this pattern, it looked like a good, I don't know, like masculine pattern. I think he'll like it. It's a super lightweight hat and where they live is not, it doesn't get like wintry cold like it does here because they're in California, but it does get cool and he goes to work in the morning and stuff and I thought he might like it. Um, he could wear it in the mornings or on the weekends or when he goes surfing or whatever. So um, I made this. I just need to get it in a package and get it out pattern is super super simple it um, uses a lot of the third loop half double crochet which is a stitch I really like I think it has good texture I think it it looks like something while not being a whole lot of extra something and again I had originally sat down and thought hey I should like come up with a hat pattern and I decided no you should just find a pattern that already exists and whip this out and I did in just a couple of hours I started this while we were listening to bedtime stories and I finished before I went to bed. So this took me just a couple hours and I was watching YouTube and doing other stuff at the same time. So quick and easy pattern, I would recommend it. Um, now with the pattern it is interesting. If you go on Ravelry, it shows up under free. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry if you want like the ad free PDF, but at the bottom there's a link you can click. You can go to the website and you can get it for free on the website, like it's on her blog. Now this was the first time I've been on a blog 
using a free pattern where I actually found the ads really obnoxious. Usually I don't really notice, but there was one ad that kept changing size. So I was using my phone to look at the pattern and it would say like what the pattern was and then the whole phone would basically take it up with an ad. So I would scroll till the right thing was on and then it would pop up the next ad would be tiny and so it kept moving around a little. I'm sure on a desktop it wouldn't have been as bad, but on my phone it was pretty annoying. But you get what you pay for and I paid nothing. So I'm not complaining. It was more just noticing that I've never had that experience with ad content on a blog um, doing that when I was trying to follow a pattern. So that is really neither here nor there, but we are on to things that are still on my hook. So that was six things off, and now there's eight things on. The first thing on my hook is actually kind of being put aside again because I ran out of yarn. So this was, excuse me, Jezebel. This was a Let Peach Lip Pick. This was the second one of this newest series. And she picked out of my browns and blacks and grays acrylic stash. And so I decided I was going to make a striped cardigan that would go with browns and blacks so that I could kind of wear this with everything I have. I am using the Reminisce sweater pattern by Heidi May of the Velvet Acorn. And I am also mixing it up Kendra style because you know me, I, I never just do things as we're into pattern, right? Um, I am using a dice to decide on my color striping. So basically, I have picked a color order. So it's going black, light brown, black, dark brown, black, light gray, black, dark gray, all the way through. But I am rolling a dice for each color segment to decide how many rows of the pattern we're gonna be done in that color sequence. So this is where I've gotten to. Um, the body is not done yet. I decided because I was using um, partial skeins, like kind of scraps that were in the drawer, that I needed to make sure if I wanted my sleeves to match the body, that I did these sleeves basically at the same time as the body once I got to um, the divide. That way I knew that my striping would match. And so far that is not a problem. This sleeve is actually completely done. The only problem is, since I finished out the brown and the gray over here, is that I have run out of the black red hearts, red heart with love, that's what this one is, um, which is kind of a thicker chenille feeling. It's not as like obnoxiously chenille as Bernat Blanket. I know people like that yarn. I find that yarn kind of weird. I have some, but I find it weird whenever I work with it. But anyways, um, with love has that kind of soft squishy feeling and so if you substitute like Red Heart Super Saver or any of the other brands basic acrylics with it you can tell a difference and I feel like that's really going to bother me in my sweater to have the like wrists be different or just to kind of change that texture so I'm waiting till I go to a store that sells with love and I will buy another skein of black I just haven't honestly been to a craft store or actually even my Walmart because my Walmart does have black with love um so that I can get another skein so that I can finish this cardigan so I can wear it. So I just have to finish this sleeve and I need to finish the bottom and then do the bottom ribbing and then obviously the button band. But I'm very happy with how it is so far. I've tried it on. I like it. Um, it's turning into a cat toy because it has ends on the floor. Please don't eat my sweater. I don't know why she's, she's all about my projects today. So that is where this is standing. I don't know how long it's going to be till this gets done. I have been chugging through like trying to get it done super quick so I can start wearing it and then I like skidded to a halt when I ran out of that yarn but I'm making a smart choice. Frequently I would just make do with what I have on hand and then that might make me a little unhappy with the end result but I'm trying to make better choices in how I finish my garments so that they end up as perfectly perfect for me at the end so I will actually use them as I talked about before so that means getting the right yarn or yarn that is right for me because sometimes I will think that just substituting something else I have in stash would be the right choice but in this case it really doesn't feel like it so I'm gonna I'm gonna get some more of that black and then we will get this accomplished this thing that is still on my hook is this it is what do you know another <laughs> simply satisfying rug mat and this is also for my dad. I actually started this one before Peach Lip picked those other yarns for him. Um, this is the uh, Ivy League Peaches and Cream and then Sea Breeze Peaches and Cream. This like kind of light turquoisey blue is 
the predominant color of the living spaces in my parents' house. My mom really liked this like sea foamy blue green color, so a lot of their house is this color. So it will look good in both their kitchen, dining room, bedroom, wherever he decides to put to put the mat. So I um I like the way it looks. It's amazing to see how held double you can take the same yarn and it looks so so different. Like that uh Ivy League with like a lighter color or a darker color, how different it reads, but how they're still kind of coordinating. So I will just keep putting love into this as it is convenient. I ended up cutting it off because I needed the rest of the cone of Ivy League to finish that one. And I cut the sea breeze off so I could make the acorn for that one. So it'll just be two more ends, but it'll be fine. It's a rug. Um, I'll just keep puttering along on that as the as the mood strikes me. The next thing that I am working on is for Halloween. Now Halloween is not till the end of the month, but my kids start having Halloween activities where they should show up dressed up um, on the 21st. So I have to get this done sooner rather than later. Um, my kids picked what they're gonna be. One's gonna be a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. We have most of the things for that. One of them is going to be an apple. I am converting some stuff I already have made for that. I need to work on that. And the other one chose to be Franklin the Turtle, like from the books. And there's a TV show, but mostly from the books. So last year for one of my kids, I made like a poncho that turned in, like looked like an owl, like feathers and a hat that looked like an owl. And so this year the other one wanted like a poncho-y thing, but they wanted to be Franklin the Turtle. So I have worked up this which is going to be the turtley shell. It looks so small, but it really does fill up a small human um, on his back. And it's, it's, a little, it's a little squishy like a pillow. So that's going to be Franklin's shell. And then I am working on this piece right now. This is also that super saver. That's camo and this is bright yellow. And this is like a chest piece that runs across and it'll have like arm things. So he can stick his arms through and his head through and his legs through like he's wearing his little shell. And then I also need to make my neckerchief and our Franklin will be complete. I think it's going to be super, super cute. I just need to like sit down and finish working on it. Again, this is one of those projects that kind of I did in like an evening, but I was really excited to get done. And then other things distracted me. And so it's not finished yet, but I should probably like sit down and do that today or tomorrow because we need it soon. The next thing that I've been working on is also Halloween related, but it's Halloween related for me. Um, this is made out of uh, loops and threads, soft and shiny, in the citrus color, which is the bright green that's also in my experiment. I love this color. Um, and I am making a, I'm using a new technique to me. Um, that I have come up with and I'm making a dress the bottom is going to be fabric I have adorable fabric I'm going to use and then I'm making a crocheted top and they're going to be sewn together so they are one piece so I made the body in the round using some various stitches that I liked and now I'm working up the like the front of the bodice and then I'll do the back and then I'll do sleeves off of it as far as the yarn will take me. I'm not sure if it's going to be long sleeve or short sleeve. It's going to end up with a fairly, fairly deep V neck, I think, unless I add a lot of neck. I don't know. Haven't decided yet. Um, but here is where we're at. This has been kind of one of those projects that I pick up and put down and pick up and put down. But I need to just pick it up because, again, time is running short between now and Halloween. And I would probably like to wear this to the events that we are going to um, starting on the 21st. Plus just for funsies all the time because I don't know, I can wear Halloween dress whenever I want. So I probably should sit down and do this. Maybe I should, I'll prioritize Franklin and then I'll work on this and we'll be, we'll be working our way toward getting our Halloween-y things completed. And I will let you know more about this as I kind of get it all together because this one I'm very much making up as I go along. So I don't know. What to tell you about it because I don't know what it is exactly and I'll do some things and I'll rip some things and I just I'm shaping it and I try it on ish and you know it's just how I work it it's not the most organized process but it's creative and fun and it feels good and that's that's what we're aiming for okay the next thing that I worked on 
wasn't a huge amount of work, but it did cross a number of things off on my bingo board for Let Peach Let Play Bingo. Um, this I worked on the other night. We went to a 4-H event where we watched cars. So I did it in front of the muggles, so the non-yarny people, um, in the dark, at in the basement of a bank, so it was by moonlight because there was big windows, while we watched Cars 3. Um, and so I'm starting another strip for my scrap stash blanket. Um, I promised Steve that I would make him one that matches mine, so that might be what this is, or this might become a pillow cover to match the pillows that are on our couch where the scrap stash blanket is. I haven't decided yet. I'm just making strips right now, and they will become what they become. And now our daylight is gone. My camera battery died and in the time it took to charge it I had to go do other lifey things and now now it's very late at night because this is when I had the opportunity to finish the video. So let's continue with my long list of things that I'm working on. Um, the next thing is this because it's the next thing on top. Um, Peachlet picked for me to work out of my purple acrylics and I pulled out two skeins of very old lavender and then a um, a skein of variegated Monet. Um, so I am designing a shawl. In this case it's actually better that I had to film now instead of earlier because apparently my kid was listening through the door and this is a surprise for her. So she, uh, she won't know about it because she can't eavesdrop right now. Um, this is a shawl that I'm designing for my daughter. She asked for a lacy shawl for Christmas. I think that she'll like this. Uh, I'm calling it my Lavender Monet shawl for right now because those are the colors that it is. Um, I like it. I have a few tweaks I would make if I did it again, but I'm kind of using this as a test and also it's going to be smaller because she's a smaller human and then I think I'm going to, uh, play around with a couple of things about it and then make a bigger version for myself when this is done. But this is in progress. I worked on this while I was on my retreat. This was the third project that I worked on. I worked on the mat until I ran out of yarn for that. I was also working on this project till I ran out of pattern that I had typed up. Um, I am doing a retest of another portion of the cogitation. Um, the first cogitation pattern I did was a wrap, it's over there somewhere, the original, um, again made out of loops and threads wool like, fingering weight, and it covered videos from May, June, and July of 2017. So those made for one wrap. My original intention with the cogitation was that I was going to be able to cover a whole year's worth of content in one large shawl. But then with what I ended up doing, it turned out to be a much bigger project. I liked it better, but it means that there's multiple parts all under the same umbrella. So the, uh, the cogitation number one wrap, I am retesting the pattern before it goes up into Peachless Pattern Pile. And I am testing it out of worsted this time. And I have, I have an idea. We're going to see what happens. Um, this is some of the Bernat Mosaic that I've had in stash forever. That is allowing me to check off on my bingo card making something with uh, what foraging in your stash for well-aged yarn, I think. This is definitely well-aged as far as my yarn stash goes. So I worked on this. I really enjoyed it. Again, I found another project that I actually liked working on the Burnett Mosaic in, which is good because I've been wanting to make things that I would really like out of this yarn because for some reason I feel like some great like connection or I really like this yarn even though most of the things I've tried making out of it I ultimately can't stand and have ended up frogging. Whenever I find something I do like out of it I really enjoy the process. So this has been good so far. I'm working on that and I would have actually done it all. This has, what am I on? I'm on my fourth skein of yarn um, into this. Um, fourth whole skein. And I would have kept going. I had two more skeins of yarn with me, but I only had that much of the pattern typed up and I forgot my handwritten copy of the rest of the pattern here at home. So that's just where I ended up on that. And I think, oh, one more project. Yesterday I started on my Carlotta again 
Carla sent me some yarn, this beautiful purple, which is very, very much like my hair. And so I am going to make myself a cardigan because I like the name Carlot again. I think it's cute. Um, I balled up three of the six or eight, I forget how many skeins I have, but I've balled up three of them so far. And I'm working out my own cardigan pattern. Um, so this is what it looks like right now. I'll, I'll show you more in depth once I've tweaked it because I'm still I'm playing with things but I'm enjoying it and it's working it beautifully and this yarn is very pleasant so I'm looking forward to this project. Um, I use this bowl from time to time. Uh, Steve and I got this as a wedding present from one of um, I guess a family friend when I was growing up and this is made from Myrtle Wood from Oregon where her the woman's kids live um, and it's, just, it's really soft wood and I never really like wanted to use it for like keys or anything because I don't want to get it all scratched up and I don't like have a candy dish out because really what happens if I leave candy out in a dish is my cats pick it up by the um, by the wrapper and like drag it all over the place and play with it. But it does make for a really nice yarn bowl when, I, uh, when I'm doing something with hand wound balls. I will even take this bowl and drop it in the bottom of a project bag um, because then the ball rolls real nice. Um, but everything's still contained. But for right now, this is just living in the bowl because that's where it ended up last night when I was done. Oh, that was a lot of things and it took me all day to film this video. Since I started the video, I actually have made major progress on some other projects, but we'll just leave things as they are in this video and I will show you further progress in another video coming up. On the screen next to me is a link to some other things that I've been up to around here. There's also a link to subscribe to both this channel as well as my daily vlog if you'd like to see what I'm up to in my regular home life. That's an option. And in the box below is a link to my Patreon page where you can find all of those patterns I talked about as well as a free bingo card for the month of October. Play along. It's very fun. I am feeling incredibly motivated and it's gotten me to get a whole lot done as you just saw. And there's also a link to my online shop if you would like to see project bags and jewelry and all the things that I've been up to over there lately. I will see you all next time. Bye!